it's been requested to me to do a couple more videos for educational purposes. And um, I've decided to do one that has been um, recently requested more than once. Um, so one of the videos I like to do on the subject line is how to reconcentrate um, or uh, concentrate a dog's semen for um, artificial insemination. Um, lower concentrations of dog semen, um, sperm in the ejaculate of a dog can be many factors why it would, what would be causing it. Mostly is age. Any time after the male reaches about five years old, their um, sperm production goes down. Um, and also it could be diet, um, general health, um, medications that the dog would be on, maybe a couple different things. Of course, if the dog had any health concerns or was on specific medications, you probably shouldn't breed the dog anyway. However, if your dog is healthy and otherwise you want to breed them and they have no genetic defects or they are producing puppies with disabilities or genetic disorders and you want to get one or two more litters out of the male before you retire him, here's a good way to um, concentrate the um, sperm higher so you can artificially inseminate with a lesser volume of semen instead of a larger volume with less semen in it. That seems like really complicated what I just said, but I'll explain as the video goes on. Um, this is a compound microscope. Um, the name of the company is down here. You can get this one off of Amazon. This one actually has an award-winning compound microscope. Um, this one goes up to um, 40 times. And it also has a um, optical oil lens. Um, you could usually see the semen at as low as um, 10 times, so or 100 times. But this is this this works awesome. Now with my microscope, I have a um, USB camera, and what this does is see these come off. Okay, you can replace these with different. Um, lens pieces but you could take this one off and this is sold separately you can also find this on Amazon um, just google um, microscope cameras for laptops and this pretty much goes in there and the USB connects to your laptop all right now if you want to go even further than that because you can already see the sample on here when it's on here you can even go a step further than that hook up a um, HDMI cable to your TV. Now what this will do is it'll just give you a bigger um, picture of what you're going to be seeing under the microscope without squinting under this little lens. And it also gives other people a chance to see all at once, which is a really nice teaching tool. So let's get on to the procedure. Okay, what you'll need for this is you'll need at least one of these and you'll need a 3C, 3ml per pipette. Um, you also need some glass slides. That you'll need a test tube, a pipette, and a glass slide. Um, you can get a whole box of them. Sometimes microscopes come with them. Um, make sure you're very careful with the glass slide. These break very easily, and as you can see with the countertop, it's really even hard to see where it's at. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is, let's see if I can, here. First thing you want to do is your semen sample. Um, this is a fresh sample. I'm not going to um, explain how we collect. If you want to know how to collect your dog's semen, please just re-Google or re-YouTube search um, dog semen collection. Um, my channel is pretty much G-rated. Um, a lot of kids and smaller, you know, a younger audience watch my channel. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but there's plenty of other people that want to put that material out there. I just don't feel comfortable doing so. So after you collect your dog's um, sample, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly pipette it. And what I mean by pipetting, you're just gonna go up and down with it and mix it around. Now semen, healthy semen, sperm, um, can live outside of the body or in a small container under room temperature for a couple hours. Um, however, you're probably going to want to perform this within the first half an hour. Um, do not let a sample sit out on the counter for more than a half an hour because the semen will start to die. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna suck as much of this up and place it in the test tube. Okay. Try to get as much in there as possible until your main container is all gone. Set your pipette to the side and close up your test tube. Now he has produced five, five mLs of semen. Um, that is an extraordinary, extraordinary large amount to put inside of a, a female dog for breeding because 75% of it's gonna fall out of her. And if you already have a dog with low sperm concentrations, you're losing 75% of your semen. So I'm gonna show you how to concentrate it in a smaller amount to have the best um, chances of conception. So one of the first things you're gonna want is a centrifuge. Um, you can get them rare, fairly inexpensive for under $100. This one's about $120 on Amazon. Um, so what you're gonna do is, a centrifuge has to be properly balanced. So you gotta make sure that you have a another tube with equal uh, amount of fluid in it. Now this here is just a, like a, um, a gel. You can use water or you can use anything that's equal in weight. Um, this is actually hand sanitizer, so it doesn't move. Um, but it's equal to the weight of this. And just make sure when you put these in that you make sure that the levels are even. Now what you're going to do is to balance the center here, you just can't put one tube in here. You're going to put your, I call it your dummy tube, in on one side, and you're going to put the semen on the other side so they're completely away, um, opposite of each other. So that way when this spins, it's not rocking all over the table. Now if you're doing more than one sample at once, say you're doing more than one artificial insemination, so you got more than one male in here, um, you're going to do the same thing with crossing them. So you're going to put one here and one here and one there and one there. You want to try to make this as even as possible. You put your lid on. Um, most of these come with a timer. I usually do five minutes. And I do about 2,000 2,000 speed, uh, a speed of 2,000. That's more than enough. You go higher than that, it's a little extreme. But if you set it at about 2,000 or 2,500, um, that seems to be. And see how well that um, spins on the table? Like, it doesn't even like rock. So, um, you're going to want to let this spin for about 5 minutes. Um, recommended time is about 15, but you could get what you need to get within 5 minutes. And um, when we come back um, to the video, um, I'll show you what the semen looks like after it's spun down. Alright, once your semen is done spinning down, if you look in this tube, you will see a big white glob at the bottom of the tube and the rest is clear and see-through. All that white on the end of that tube is all 100% semen. And if you actually sit here and watch it, you'll start to see it rise because the semen, the sperm are starting to swim upwards, which is what they naturally do. So what we're going to do is, we'll, we'll, we'll show you what we're going to do. So what you're going to do is, with a pipette, you're going to squeeze together. Sorry if this is in the way. You're going to squeeze this. And you're going to put this pipette all the way down. And you're going to take out all that sperm at the bottom. All right. Now, this is your highly concentrated specimen. And you're going to transfer that to the collection cup. Now, this here is low concentrated just semen. Okay? This is the actual concentrated sperm. Um, one of the ways you can tell there's hardly any sperm in it is because you can see through it. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like under the microscope as opposed to what we separated. So we're going to do that next. Okay, we're going to prepare our slides here. I don't have the best lighting in here, so I apologize. Okay, so that's our sample from the tube. And like I said, this is the look, there's hardly anything in here because we separated it. This is slide number one. And then we're going to take the sample we spun down that's more concentrated, 
and we're going to put it on this slide. And I don't know if you can see, you just take it and spin it in a circle. Okay? Now, this is the separated part of the semen, and this is the highly concentrated um, sperm right here that we separated. Now, I'm going to show you the difference in concentration between the two. Put your slide under the you always want to start with the lowest optical first all right and I'll show you on the bigger screen hopefully it'll show well, maybe not I'll show you on this one all right as you can see there's hardly anything there's a couple of swimmers Here, let me blow this up a little bit now, this is the part we separated we separated the semen from the sperm and as you can see, there's very little, maybe 20 there in the picture, and there should be maybe 5,000. Okay? All right, now let me show you the sample from the part that we took out, we pipetted out of the bottom of the tube after centrifuging. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a highly concentrated semen sample after centrifuge. And that's at the lowest optical. That's about a hundred times. If you go up to the next, you'll start to see tails and heads, which there's so many you actually can't make them out. Okay? So there's probably about... 500,000 sperm just in this little sample. Now we're taking a 5 ml sample and concentrating it down to a 1 ml sample but with twice the sperm in it. So basically the, the whole point of doing this is to artificially inseminate your female with less fluid um, and more s sperm in the sample and also for males who have a low concentration but a lot of semen to begin with, um, you can up your conception rates um, by just spinning your sperm down, concentrating it, um, pipetting the um, highly concentrated sperm out of the bottom of the test tube, and just um, infusion, infusing the 1 ml of semen. Um, after you spin this down, and it does not hurt the sperm whatsoever, um, we've had successful pregnancies and puppies and deliveries after this, and the puppies have been harmed in no way, so this does not affect um, the DNA or the genetic structure of the sperm. Um, they do this in IVF labs and infertility labs for humans, um, so um, this is quite common. So um, they also do this um, before an IUI procedure. Um, if you're going in for infertility treatments, um, they do this for an IUI procedure, except there's one more step with an IUI. They're actually injecting the sperm into the uterus. In this case, we are not injecting those sperm into the uterus. We're just, it's an intracervical insemination, so we're just putting the sperm outside of the cervix and letting nature take its course. So when you're artificially inseminating, you can't dilly a dally around with this stuff. Um, sperm will die. Um, you know, usually within an hour, it loses its some of its motility, about 50% of it will die. Um, so you want to do this all within a short period of time, as like in this video. Um, so in your collection tube, I usually always use the same collection tube I collected in. It does, it's not going to matter. I'm going to draw up the semen that I collected and I concentrated in the bottom of that tube. At the end of the process, you should have about 1 ml to 2 mls to inseminate with. That's it. So when you put this up inside the female, there's going to be hardly any spillage. As opposed to a normal ejaculate for a dog is anywhere from 5 to 10 mls. And if you're putting 5 to 10, 10 mls of semen inside a um, dog's vagina, 90% of it's going to spill out. Um, that's the whole point of the tie. Um, dogs tie for a reason. Um, nature, all right, uh, knows what it's doing. So in the process of a dog tie, the dogs, what some people call nodding up, for a reason. Um, the male dog ejaculates so much semen 
um, very like the sperm's in there, but so much semen and secretions are within that ejaculate that when the dog is breeding that if they just had regular intercourse, like humans, let's say, 90% of that um, sperm would fall out of her. Um, so dogs knot up so they can stay together for that 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes up to an hour time frame to give that like it's almost like a, a plug really and it pushes the semen and the, the sperm up against the cervix so it gives that sperm um, 20 to 45 minutes leeway to get into that cervix so that's the whole point of the the canine tie um, because the male dog produces so much fluid that if they had if if they I don't want to compare humans to dogs but we're going to do it again if they if you you know, if they just had relations like we did, there would probably be less puppies in the world. Some people might say that's a good thing, some might say it's a bad thing, but we're not here to argue that point. But that's the whole point in the tie. The tie is because male dogs produce so much fluid, and the tie is to create a little bit of a balance and a leeway for the sperm to get to where they're going. Um, by the 20 to 45 minutes of a tie, and the male pulls out because he's done, um, usually all the sperm that needs to be in the uterus is already in there by then. So most conceptions and pregnancies occur within the first 10 to 15 minutes of that tie. Um, sometimes it, what can happen is some breeders will talk about a slip tie um, where um, they'll start to do the process and then they slip out. They don't stay knotted for the whole 20 minutes. You can still get, the dog can still um, uh, get pregnant that way However, the chances of it happening are less likely, but the possibility is always there. Anytime sperm enters the vagina of the dog, there's always that possibility because it only takes one. You know, one puppy, two puppies, it doesn't matter. It just takes one. And um, uh, dog semen is 100% more concentrated than human semen ever could be. There's millions of them, uh, trillions. Like, I would have to like Google it, but I'm pretty sure just looking under the microscope and comparing, apples to oranges dog semen is dog sperm is just so highly concentrated it's no it's no wonder there are so many dogs and so many unwanted pregnancies that are happened that happen all the time and people aren't trying because dogs are very fertile um, so enough of that so what you're gonna do is I use a um, 10 French okay it's just a regular catheter urinary catheter um, you could use a feeding tube catheter anything that has a hole in the end of it um, you don't want to use anything too big um, and what I usually do is I take it down a notch okay so there's a little bit of air in the top tip and then I flip it over the reason for this is to get all of this inside of the female dog so I'm gonna take it all the way down to the tip and then I have all this air right here. That way when I push it in, I'm getting everything out of the tube. Um, and since it's such a small amount, it's not gonna matter if I just have a little bit of air in there. Um, I also use, sorry, I also use a sperm friendly lubricant. Uh, this is called Pre-Seed. It's actually um, meant for humans, but it, it works for dogs the same way. Um, I just take it and I lubricate the end of it. You want to try not to put a dry tube inside of your dog. You wouldn't like that, um, and I suggest you not do it to your dog. Um, make it a little more comfortable for her if you can, and just lube up the end. Um, so now we're going to show you how we do this with the girl. All right, so I don't put my dogs in any kind of um, devices. I know some, like... Pit bull owners and some bigger dog owners like put their dogs in some kind of contraption to artificially inseminate them. We don't do that. I think that's a little cruel. Um, so um, we just do it on the floor on a puppy pad for sanitary reasons. And you're going to, like I said, you're going to make sure that there's air in the top. So she's very receptive. Now when they're in heat, they really don't mind this because they're all swollen anyway, and that's it. 
Now, to simulate its high naturally, um, without actually doing this naturally, you're going to want to pinch their bulb shut um, and kind of like just touch their like the sides of their thighs like this. Um, as you can see, she's she's like at the tail end of her fertile period, um, so she's almost done. This is probably going to be her last breeding. But um, you want to like just scratch the back of her thighs a little bit. Um, this will stimulate contractions inside her vagina to bring the sperm up inside the uterus more. Um, but she's very receptive. She'll pull, put her butt back and forth. Um, she was doing that yesterday, so she's not as receptive today. So it just means that she's on the tail end of her fertile period. When she's on her back here, you just hold her and you know pet her and be gentle with her and you know don't do anything crazy i mean you wouldn't like that so don't do that to them um i've seen some kind of con i've seen some contraptions people put their dogs in to breed them and i don't think that's very humane so um what you could also do is you could prop her butt, butt up on some pillows um, make her feel more comfortable put a pillow behind her head or put her pillow under your lap um, i usually just take my foot or um, a uh, soft towel and I put it under her um, bottom just to elevate it a little bit so everything goes down. Um, be a, don't be a heartless owner. So if you ain't gonna breed with heart, um, you shouldn't be breeding at all. So you have to have compassion and love for the animals you breed. And if you can't do that, you shouldn't be breeding. So, but um, just pet her and Keep doing this. Let her lay here for about 15 minutes. Tell her what a good girl she is. Hug her, kiss her, and all that good stuff. After 5 or 15 minutes, um, you can put her back in her crate. Let her walk around. She can do whatever she wants. Nothing will come out because it's such a small amount. It's like a, it was like an ml and a half. Um, so if she does have any leakage, it'll be very minimal. Um, so like I said, she's not flagging as much anymore. So she's probably like almost done. See, she's flagging a little bit. But um, when they're very, very receptive, like when they're just in the beginning of the fertile period, they'll like rock back and forth because they're very, very receptive. So you're just gonna wanna pet them. And um, yeah, so if uh, anybody has any questions, feel free to message me. Um, the syringes I use are three mLs. Um, these seem to be perfect. If you concentrate your semen before you in, um, Put it in, um, you, only have, you only need half of this, so you don't have to have two or three syringes and a bunch of leakage. And um, that's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or give me a call, meterstoxins.com. Bye.